Hey guys, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a little bit of a different video where I will talk about Dendrobium orchids, which ones I found easy to grow indoors and which ones I find a little bit more difficult to grow. As most of you guys know, I grow indoors in the Northeast, um, so my temperatures are pretty consistent indoors um, with the exception of summer where the temperatures and the humidity get much higher. Um, I find that some orchids are way more easier to grow than others and the ones that are a little bit tougher to grow for me, you basically have to make some adjustments that mimic their uh, growing conditions in the wild. So let's start off with the easy orchids and we'll work our way to the more difficult orchids and I'll share some tips and tricks that I have to blooming them. So when I think of easy dendrobium orchids, I think of the Latoria type dendrobiums. This one here is my dendrobium chocolate chip. It, I actually got this um, last holiday and it got lost in the mail for almost two weeks. So it came full of buds and spikes and um, they all blasted and it got cold damage, but it bounced back incredibly quickly. Um, this is my Dendrobium Green Flash. This one has also done really well. It got attacked by thrips and I burned the leaves with neem oil, but I find Latoria orchids really easy to grow indoors. They seem pretty happy in semi-hydro, so I have them both in LECA with a top layer of pebbles, and the chocolate chip especially has bloomed very profusely. It still has damage on the leaves from last year. Some of the leaves have fallen off, but I find it very vigorous. You get um, blooms from some of the um, canes multiple times, so it's capable of giving you a really, really nice show. And what's really nice about these guys is that the blooms last a really long time. So it can last kind of like a Phalaenopsis orchid. So, so sort of like um, two to three months, you'll get those blooms to last. These are warm growers, so you can grow them indoors in your regular conditions. I give these guys moderate lights and they tend to do pretty well. I'm very happy with that chocolate chip. Um, just it surviving cold damage just showed me right away that it was very vigorous. So I find Latoria's really easy. Next is the Dendrobium Phalaenopsis orchid. So to the left, I have a cross of Burana Stripe, cross with Burana Jade, I believe, and then to the right is my Dendrobium Popeye. These guys are warm to hot growers. Some of them grow more hot than others, but typically as a group overall, I find that they tend to be pretty happy indoors if you can give them warm conditions. Um, my temperatures don't go far below 60 indoors, so it's, um, they do pretty well. One thing to note is that these guys do need a uh, good bright light. So I give them, they grow under LED lights and they, uh, spike and bloom just fine. But I find that because you don't have to give it any different care, they grow pretty well. So if you're indoors, you're not, you don't get cool periods. If you can grow... Even if you grow them outside, you probably get even even better show. But I find these guys really easy to grow. The flowers do last a pretty long time. The only issue I'd say with these guys is that for me, they're prone to spider mites sometimes. Uh, but otherwise, they've got very beautiful blooms. This is my Dendrobium um, Buttercup. And then this one right here is my Dendrobium Enobi Purple. Super easy, very floriferous, and really nice, easy to grow orchids. When I think of orchids that are a little bit tougher, I think of the soft cane uh, Dendrobium orchids. So on the outside, I have uh, two Dendrobium Anosmum orchids, and in the middle, I have the Dendrobium Lodigesii orchid. Now these orchids, they grow uh, just like any other um, active growing dendrobium orchid in the summer. You fertilize quite heavily, you water quite heavily, but they have a rest period. So you have to change the care for them when it comes to the winter. So you start tapering off the feed and they also require a bit of a cool down. Now this one right here is the Alba version. 
And I find that this grows well, even without being cooled down too much. But I do crack a window to get the temperatures uh, down to about 60. Sometimes it'll get a touch under 60, but not very long. I try to keep these guys closer to the window. So I think if, you, if you're if you growing these indoors, you'll be able to bloom them if you can crack a window open and get these a little bit cooler. So they're not as easy as a Dunfowl because you have to manipulate the temperatures. If you grow outdoors and you have conditions where it can go down like in Florida, this is perfect. But when you grow indoors, you really have to make adjustments to make sure that these orchids get a nice cool down. Many of these are really fragrant. And um, the anosmum especially smells like raspberries. So it's really, really nice, really pleasant. Um, the alba is in bloom right now, and it is filling up my grow space. So this is one of my favorites. It's also got a really nice fuzzy lip, but just keep in mind it has to be cooled down a little bit more than the rest of your grow space to get them to bloom. Now for the tougher ones, my two... Oh, hardest to grow orchids indoors, I'd say, are the Dendrobium nobili and the Dendrobium kingianum. These guys in the wild normally get um, much cooler temperatures during their rest period. It's very similar to the Dendrobium anosmum where they do need a winter rest, but the temperatures have to go lower. So you could put these by a cracked window, but depending on, on where you live and how cool it can get, it might not do the trick. So the Nobili last year stayed outside for a couple of months before it got uh, frost and I had more flowers. This year frost came early and I brought it in early and I noticed that the bloom count went down. So if you want good blooms on the Nobili, I found that you have to keep it uh, cool for a prolonged period of time. And um, it's sort of tough when you grow indoors, right? You don't have that cool down that these orchids get in the wild. You have to find ways to keep it cool. Personally, I keep mine on the fire escape. Same with the kingianum as it gets larger, but these orchids need a much deeper cool down that a cracked window may not be able to provide. Anyway, guys, let me know down in the comments below which dendrobium orchids you find easy and hard to grow indoors. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more orchid content. Talk soon. Bye, everyone.